Yo, Dara is a character I don't often see played or talked about, so obviously that just means there isn't any good content on him yet, so naturally after this video there are going to be a lot more Yodara mains out there, right? Jokes aside, Yodara is a really fast-paced character that excels at consistently attacking, sticking to enemies, and abusing forms of invincibility and immunity to get the most out of his kit. This fast-paced playstyle can be really fun to take advantage of as you zip all over the field and spam his attacks and combo finishers near infinitely to get a lot of consistent damage. He also has some pretty nice team support to help the team stay alive and get hit less often as well, which can be very nice if you're playing with randoms who get hit a lot, or with your friends if they're bad. In this video, I want to discuss Yodara, discuss general playstyle and setup, talk about some strengths and weaknesses, and showcase some practical use in harder raid fights. As per usual, if you enjoy guide content on this game, RPGs in general, and especially Xenoblade, and are interested in seeing more since I do plan to cover everyone and we're in the final stretch, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much. Let's get into it. Let's start with the basics. As mentioned, Yodara is a character that excels at consistently dealing damage and sticking to enemies, often being able to abuse invincibility to have minimal downtime in fights. He has a couple unique mechanics, the first of which are tied to his first support skill, his Shroud Marks. Essentially, this is his unique resource, and it's pretty easy to understand. So, Shroud Marks will stack up to a maximum of three, with the color scheme gradually becoming more green as you stack them, with each Shroud Mark granting bonus effects to his skills. Gaining and managing your stacks will be key to getting the most out of Yodara. The way you generate Shroud Marks includes using and landing the last hit of your combo finisher, using a Link Attack, and from timing Yodara's unique counter perfectly. When using a skill, Shroud Marks will be consumed to enhance the skill. With one of Yodara's unique sigils, you can get a very nice chance to not consume Shroud Marks on skill use, which can give you a lot of benefit as well, but we'll talk a bit more about that when we get there. So Yodara is a character all about his combo finishers. Not only does it generate Shroud Marks, but it also does a lot of damage, and his second support skill backs this up, as it's one of the things that will allow you to consistently deal a lot of damage with Yodara. Essentially, Yodara has a pretty long combination attack normally, usually being five attacks or inputs in order to get to your combo finisher. But essentially with this skill, you can immediately attack out of your combo finisher to continue your combo, and you will need one less attack at that point to use your combo finisher again. This will continue stacking until you only need one attack after the combo finisher to immediately go back into the combo finisher, which means you can get a lot of damage if you're able to ramp this up and consistently use combo finishers, and more combo finishers also means more shroud marks with each use, which means better skills as well. Damaging skills can also chain into combo finishers to keep this pattern going, and link attacks will also immediately chain into combo finishers, meaning smart usage of these can shorten your standard combo very quickly to allow you to use as many combo finishers as possible. The combo finisher also has invincibility for a few frames after using it, meaning that timing this can allow you to negate damage you might have taken otherwise. If you're able to stack up your combo finisher without being interrupted, you can get some very high consistent damage and a lot of windows of vulnerability, which can be very nice in many fights. Now, you can be interrupted and have to reset entirely. Dodging will not reset, so using this with perfect timing on upcoming enemy attacks can be good, but enemies damaging you or knocking you back can be annoying and will knock you out of this combination. And obviously, during downtime phases, you're going to lose it no matter what, which can be a little annoying. Fortunately, Yodara does have a couple other tools he can use. By holding down the Y button, Yodara will be ready to parry attacks, and if you are able to parry with perfect timing, you will grant yourself a supplementary damage buff for free additional damage, and immediately will be able to go back into the fastest possible combo finisher chain, meaning that parries can be one of the most effective ways for increasing your damage in these fights, so this is the only way to get the supplementary damage buff, and the fastest way to get to your combo finisher. Releasing the parry or pressing the Y button quickly will also lunge at the foe as a, acting as a decent gap closer to get back into the enemy's face quickly. You can also dodge right after the parry to occasionally get iframes and make the parry safer to attempt to perform, since missing will have you eat damage, and if you're able to get the parry and the iframes from the dodge, you can be in a very good position to go ham on the enemy immediately, and this is one of the best strategies to use as Yodara. The ideal Yodara gameplay loop is going to be consistently chaining combo finishers together, weaving in skills when you have shroud marks, and taking advantage of your invulnerability mechanics and skills to continue attacking and looping combo finishers. This makes him one of the more fast-paced characters in the game who can output pretty high consistent damage if you're able to take advantage of his mechanics. We'll talk a bit more about other gameplay-related info in the specific sections that they are relevant. Let's get into setup now. 
For setup, as you might expect at this point, the weapon I am using is the Terminus weapon since it is the best weapon in the game for the Catastrophe bonus effect and the ability to have Sigil Booster as well. That 50% extra attack, the 100% extra damage cap, boosting all your Sigil traits by one level when you have it maxed out. Just an absolutely fantastic effect. Also gives you the last few levels of damage cap that you need as well. So really, really awesome weapon. Absolutely run out of you have it. Otherwise, the Crit Rate weapon, the Max Ascender weapon are probably going to be your best bets overall. So as far as Sigil setup, now... His unique sigils are interesting. His first one is not necessarily required, but the fact that I have damage cap as a sub trade on it means that I am running it no matter what here, just because it's basically a free kind of attack boost trade at this point to make sure that I'm hitting damage caps on everything here. So Swordsmaster's Prowess here. This is a decent effect. When you land a combo finisher, you get a basically free 30% attack boost, and as long as you're continuing the chain, you get to keep this attack boost, and it's pretty easy to keep that chain going most of the time. So this can act as a pretty effective attack boost. Now, other forms of damage boost might be more consistent a lot of the time, and if you do not have a way to really conveniently fit this into the, the, your build, this could be skippable if you have other damage boosts like Stamina and Tyranny. But as a form of just kind of a free damage boost, if you have it attached to another red trait, it is something to definitely consider if you don't think you need another additional trait. It's a nice attack boost to have. It is a pretty good effect. Swordsmaster's Art, on the other hand, this is a significantly more useful sigil effect that is going to be useful basically 100% of the time with the Odara for directly not only increasing your damage, but increasing basically all of your effects when you have it. So Swordsmaster's Art, 75% chance to basically not consume your Triple Shroud marks, which is pretty incredible. That is three-fourths of the time you're not going to be consuming your marks at all, which means that you can kind of chain your skills together and get the maximum benefit out of them 75% of the time without having to perform combo finishers or build up your Shroud marks again. It won't trigger all the time, but just having that 75% chance will drastically increase your DPS and the effectiveness of your skills and support abilities for your allies. So absolutely make sure you are running this no matter what. It is a fantastic sigil, fantastic effect to have. If you have the Awakening, you could probably put both these on the same same uh, sigil as well if you really need to. Improved Dodge is the sub trait that I have on the Swordsmaster's Arc because I didn't really have a good orange trait to put on this, but that's not really a huge deal because Yodara's caps aren't super significantly high to where you need like a ton of damage or anything like that, so I'm still able to hit that with the current setup that I have. I'm running my other three damage cap 5 pluses here to go along with the one that I have on Swordsmaster's Prowess to uh, make sure that I'm hitting the maximum there. The sub traits I have are a quick cooldown. Yodara benefits very greatly from cooldown effects because uh, using skills more often is very beneficial to him, especially if you can keep your triple shroud marks up. So that's why Cascade is another effect that I have on here that apparently works really well on Yodara compared to some other characters in the game. So that's really nice to consider. Able to uh, get those cooldowns significantly faster running both of these. Uh, free 1.6% skill cooldown depending on the weight of the hit at least uh, if you're running at least one level of Cascade. Uh, quick cooldown is a really nice effect to have as well. Gets 20% if you can max out all three levels just for free skill cooldown reduction, which is awesome. And then the other trait is Potion Hoarder, probably the best defensive sub sigil sub trait in the game currently just for consistency. Being able to heal yourself in pretty much every situation is just really nice to have. It's a very nice sigil effect to have and consider running. I'm running two supplementary damage fives with just two of these. You're able to uh, trigger a 20% damage boost 74% boost, uh, of the time, which is really nice. It also stacks with the supplementary damage you can grant yourself from using your counter, so uh, you can get some free damage out of that as well. It's not going to override it or anything like that, so that is a, another benefit of the supplementary damage sigils, just as a way to boost your damage further. And then I'm running the general attack boosters. Pretty much every character ends up running right now. Stamina and Tyranny, with critical hit rate 5+, plus is attached to them as the other trait to make sure I'm hitting the maximum critical hit rate I can. Now, I don't have the overmastery 100% without very conveniently right now, but uh, just running these two attack boosters is nice. And along with the uh, Swordsmaster's Art, basically ensuring that I'm hitting damage cap on everything that is relevant uh, pretty much all the time. So that's nice at the very least. War Elemental is uh, really nice to bypass the damage cap, get even more additional damage, as you might expect. You should pretty much be running this on everyone. Uh, just a free 20% additional damage boost, so that's really nice to have. And then finally, Link Together and Aegis here. These are the other ways I get the quick cooldown on my build which is really nice to uh, ensure that I'm used to be able to use skills as much as possible and take advantage of those triple shroud marks. Link together is just an awesome trade in general for party support and just kind of general utility to have in one kind of slot here. Free extra link level gain, more link damage, uh, more SBA damage and gain as well. So that's really nice to have. And then Aegis is just increasing the maximum health to about 41,000. So I have more survivability if I end up do getting hit. Now Yodara is a character who can benefit a lot from some other sub traits as well. I am not running Guts on this current set. I probably should. I would 
ideally have a better imbue that would allow me to get more critical hit rate in guts than what I currently have right now, and that would be a way that I could fit that onto my build. Nimble Onslaught is something else that can be really good on Yodara to get extra invincibility whenever you're able to dodge an attack, especially if you're trying to dodge immediately after a parry. So that is something to definitely consider if you're able to conveniently fit it onto your kit. I was not with this specific setup, but that is definitely a really, really good sub trait to have. The improved dodge as well uh, combos really well with Nimble Onslaught if you want to try to get more chances to get more invincibility. And Nimble Onslaught also reduces your skill cooldowns even further and uh, gives you more SBA. So that's a really awesome effect that uh, definitely is a sub trait worth considering. And like I said, Guts is a really good defensive sub trait as well if you can manage to fit it onto your build. And uh, Auto Revive could be in consideration as well if you're really worried about dying. But with all the forms of ways that Yodara has to kind of negate damage, you probably don't need that much defensive utility anyway. Let's talk about skills very quickly now. Yodara has actually a lot of really nice skills. It can be difficult to actually pick the best ones here. So the general setup that I am running are these four skills. We started things off with Awakening. This has a really short cooldown, which makes it ideal for just kind of using even when you don't have Shroud Marks as a way to uh, kind of chain into your combo finishers faster. It also acts as a really effective gap closer and can do it more damage if you do have uh, more hits and if you do have Triple Shroud Marks stacked up. So you do more damage with it when you do have those Triple Shroud Marks. But if you don't, it's still an okay move worth using just because of the really short cooldown and ability to immediately chain into a combo finisher attack and start stacking up those Triple Shroud Marks for your other abilities. Sky Shatter also has a decently short cooldown. It's, it's not as short as Awakening, but it is a nice art to have. And it also has some decent range on it as well. And uh, the, it does more damage based on your Triple Shroud Marks, as you might expect. And also chains into your combo finisher. Another really nice skill to have and something that allows you to, to use skills more often if you end up running it. So I do like this ability a lot. It's one of his... Uh, it does pretty decent damage as well, so I do like this. Empty Miss is basically a straight DPS skill. One of the... Uh, strongest that he has the more shroud marks you have the longer this ability will last basically if you hold down the button it is assigned to you will just slash over and over and over again this also is really good during link time for refilling the link time gauge to uh make link time last longer and it's uh, just a really nice high damage skill in general that you can get a lot of benefit out of and uh, a lot of damage out of if you do end up running it so i like this skill a lot it also changes into your combo finisher as you might expect really good skill and then Hymn of the Hundreds is the last skill that I'm running on this set. I recommend this on pretty much all Yodara sets because it's just a really, really useful utility ability. Mirror Image basically is uh, a way to nullify damage taken, but for five hits. So this is a really nice ability to have, just kind of nullify damage and uh, keep yourself invincible and, ability, and keep the ability to keep spamming those combo finishers and stay in the enemy's face while it is active. And if you activate this when your triple shroud marks are full, it'll grant this to the entire party. So it's essentially a nice ghost factory effect here and a uh, really nice effect to have, especially if you're in a fight that is more dangerous. And uh, if you're able to keep uh, attacking the enemy, you'll also get the benefit of Cascade to reduce the cooldown of this further and kind of keep uptime on this. So your party is able to uh, kind of go ham as well and attack the enemy more often without getting hit, which is really, really nice as an effect to have. This is a very good survivability and useful utility ability to run on Yodara. As far as his other abilities, Trice Blade is probably the least useful effect he has where you just gain an attack boost and uh, you lose it upon taking damage. Now, the caps for Yodara are pretty easy to hit, as I mentioned, so you do not really need this attack boost, and the fact that you even lose it upon taking damage makes it even less useful. So this is probably the most useful, useless skill you have and probably not something you should be running in pretty much any situation. Perpetual Rotation. Now, this has a really long cooldown, but it can be extremely useful depending on what kind of setup you're running. If you're running skills with really high cooldowns, this could be a with but do a lot of damage. This can be a really good skill to run. It will instantly reset all of your other skills if you have full triple shroud marks, no matter where they are, no matter how long the cooldown was. This can be really nice for refreshing mirror image more often. It could be really nice for getting your stronger damage skills like empty mist and flashing void out more often. This is a pretty solid skill when you do that. It can also instantly give you triple shroud marks, which sometimes has some really niche utility options there, but uh. Ideally, you'll be using it when you already have full triple shroud marks to get the full benefit out of it, because otherwise you're not really getting the most benefit out of it most of the time otherwise. But it can instantly restore your triple shroud marks, so that is something as well. And then we have Tit for Tat. This is his skill parry encounter, which will allow you to restore your triple shroud marks and also does damage based on the current triple shroud marks that you have. Perfectly timing it will restore your triple shroud marks. 
This can be useful depending on the fight that you were in and if you think you will need to parry more often, but otherwise you'll probably be okay with just the standard supplemental damage parry that you have. But it is a way to restore your triple shroud marks, which can be nice. And then we have Flashing Void. This is his highest damage skill that he has, and you are able to kind of roll and dodge between doing all of the attacks, and as you keep attacking with the button, you can get a maximum of 13 hits out of this. And it does do a lot of damage. The problem is it takes a while to come out and can be very slow. So uh, that is the one uh, a kind of negative of this ability. Now, it can be a really good skill if you're able to get all the hits out, as I said. It's just mainly the fact that it is really slow, and a lot of times bosses will not give you the ample amount of time to land all of the hits of it to make it not as beneficial as his other damaging abilities. And uh, you will still get a lot of DPS just from using his other abilities and his combo finisher, so you don't necessarily need to use this ability, but it can be a good ability to run if you think you can get the full benefit and damage out of it. So that covers it for his skills. Let's just briefly talk about overmasteries. My overmasteries are kind of not that great with the character, but uh, I'm kind of getting to the point where if it's if it's okay and good enough to talk about, then I'm all right with it. I got some normal attack damage cap up and skill damage cap up. These are going to be two of the most important things with the Odara. If you're able to get critical hit rate up, you are able to reach that 100% critical hit rate with just like 4% uh, running two critical hit rate sigils. But if you're able to get 20% critical hit rate up, you only have to run one critical hit rate sigil to reach that 100% which can be really nice to save out on some sigil slots and sub-traits if you really need to. So those are going to be the main three things as, that you're going to want on Yodara, as you might expect here. Uh, other things that might be useful are stun powers, you can get more link attacks and get more combo finishers that way, and Skybound Art damage cap up so you can do more damage on your Skybound Art, which could be pretty beneficial as well. So those are the main things, as you might expect. That is going to cover it for the setup portion of this video. Let's get into some actual gameplay now. As per usual, here's the spoiler warning on post-game raid fights if you are worried about that at all. Let's get into it. So I apologize for reusing these same fights over and over. It's just these are the ones that are, like, not a training dummy proto-Baja, so... I start things off by immediately going for the parry here and getting that supplementary damage bonus. After this, I... My plan here is to take advantage of the supplementary damage and try to output as much damage as I can, but I think upon doing this, I had kind of poor uses of my shroud marks here at the beginning of the fight, but, uh... I do kind of rectify this and do better Shroud Mark usage later in the fight at the very least. So, uh, thanks to all of the ability spamming I was able to do, though, I am able to kind of immediately chain into combo finishers over and over at this point without having to do the longer combo chain at the very least. And, uh, supplementary damage is gone now, unfortunately, but that is not a huge deal because I'm just going to be, uh, get take, looking at my Shroud Marks at this point, and when I have enough, I'm going to be using my skills to get the most benefit out of them at this point to do as much damage as possible. Now, I believe our id and our captain here were either new or not optimized yet because they were not doing too much damage compared to myself and the fairy, and they didn't have much honors either at the end of this, but not really a huge deal. Because it, it makes the fight a little bit longer so I can show off a couple extra things, right? So, uh, at this point, I make sure once I have triple shroud marks to activate the mirror image for the entire party as well to give them some survivability, and if I keep that up, I will immediately go into another skill, and if I don't, then I'll just go into my normal combo attacks there. Now, Mirror Image, unfortunately, will break the combo chain since it's not an attacking ability, but it's still worth it to have out at the very least, so not really a huge deal. Once I get my SBA, I immediately go into it to kind of try to stunlock and combo lock PDA even further here. If we had a team with more damage, we'd probably already be close to killing or would have killed by now, but not really a huge deal either way. So I'm paying attention to my Shroud Marks. When I get that activation and keep the 75% chance to keep my Shroud Marks, I can immediately go into another skill into a combo finisher. And then when I don't... Uh, it can be a little bit unfortunate, and I will not get the full benefit out of some of these abilities, but not really a huge deal, because you can still build Shroud Marks really quickly as long as you keep your combo going, as I've been able to hopefully here. As you can see, I've had basically no downtime this entire fight. I've been attacking pretty much since the fight began, which is one of the major benefits of Yodara here. I've also got Mirror Image up again. I'm just going to be uh, kind of paying attention to uh, the that ability and activating that as soon as we go into this kind of middle phase here to make sure that everyone has that active for this... Uh, part of the fight here where we can't really do much of anything. I also try to uh, activate my supplementary damage bonus again near the end of this. I end up getting invincibility but not supplementary damage, so I dodged a little bit too early there. Not really a huge deal. If I had Nimble Onslaught, I could have gotten more benefit out of that and had more invincibility timer. Not really a huge deal either way. Uh, right now, we're just going to go back into this again, and we're going to be setting up Link Time here. So I'm going to be making sure that I activate Link Time here. And ideally, this would also be the end of the fight if we had enough damage, but we still do not for some reason, sadly. 
Not really a huge deal, though. During Link time, you have full Shroud Marks basically all the time, so you can definitely spam your strongest skills. With Empty Mist there, you can see I'm able to keep the Link Gauge Bar really full during that entire duration there, which is really nice. And uh, then the targeting system kind of goes a little bit whack there. I dodge the attack as he comes down, and since we don't have enough damage, he does go into the Firefly phase, and I'm just going to skip that because it's like over a minute of downtime where nothing's basically happening. So uh, Firefly is over now. That's really nice, and uh, I try to activate my uh, supplementary damage at the very end of this again, and I'm able to get it immediately on the last attack of Firefly here, so I'm able to go into more attacks here and get the uh, extra damage and supplementary damage to hopefully kind of end the fight a little bit quicker here. And, uh... Yodara doesn't have the absolute highest damage in the world, but I'd say he makes up for it just being able to consistently attack constantly here until you get kind of owned by lasers like I did at the end of the fight here, there, really quickly there when I was aim unable to get the full damage from Empty Mist out, which is really sad. Not really a huge deal, though. He's basically dead at this point, and uh, we just kind of end the fight with the last combo finisher there. I'll show off a quick uh, fight against the Black Worm here. I had the worst start ever here because I tried to parry at the beginning here, and I end up failing and dying because I don't have guts, so... That is one one of the reasons you might want to run Guts sometimes, but uh, ignoring that, I'm able to uh, kind of get behind him and then go into a nice combo finisher attack here and start striking up my Shroud Marks. Once I get three Shroud Marks, I activate him of the Hundreds to give everyone Mirror Image, so everyone has that invulnerability, the mirror, then the ability to kind of tank five attacks without taking any damage, which is really nice. And then I just uh, make sure I'm taking advantage of my Shroud Marks using Empty Mist when I have full Shroud Marks, ideally. I did not do it there because I'm bad, but... Uh, Ideally, I would have had full Shroud Marks there before doing that. I, I think when you get used to having the 75% chance for it to trigger, you can kind of get complacent sometimes with your Shroud Marks, but uh, do make sure to see if those get consumed. It is going to be important to make sure that you can get the most benefit out of some of your skills. Luckily, stuff like Awakening you don't have to worry about since it has such a short cooldown anyway. You can kind of just use it whenever to uh, both get the damage and also kind of stack up your combo finisher. So that is kind of what I've been using it for mostly here. And this fight's going a lot smoother because we have a team with much more damage and uh, Fairy once again gets insane SBA generation and gets SBA before the rest of us even hit 80%, which is pretty insane, but uh, not a huge deal. I just activate Empty Miss there and uh, the knockback there is a little unfortunate. It kind of knocks me out of the combo chain, so uh, doesn't matter too much though because he goes into this phase and uh, I just activate Mirror Image for everyone again to uh, make this phase a little bit smoother. I'm just chaining invincibility here. I don't have a nimble onslaught, so it doesn't really do a ton for me. And even if I got the supplementary damage bonus like I do there, it doesn't matter because we can't really attack him at the current moment in time, and the supplementary damage is going to wear off like right before I'm able to actually take advantage of that. So ideally, you do it on that last attack here before rushing in. And yeah, the supplementary damage does wear off there, unfortunately, so I don't get the full benefit of that parry there. So ideally, how I like playing him, and as you've probably seen, is kind of going for parries early on in fights to get that supplementary damage bonus, and then... uh. Just going ham from there really more than anything, especially if you can get the invincibility on top of that because you're able to continuously attack. Make sure you activate Mirror Image when you have full Shroud Marks to grant that bonus to everyone so they're able to keep attacking as well without too much issue. And other than that, it's not really too difficult. I go for the full Shroud Marks here before using Empty Mist at the, as the end of this fight here. And then one last combo finisher to end the fight. All in all, Yodara isn't too difficult or complex of a character to play. He's a lot of fun. He's pretty fast-paced if you're able to take advantage of all of his kit. And I do enjoy playing him a lot. I do hope you learned something from watching this video and kind of understand kind of the general play style and how to approach and play Yodara more. And if you do, please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and give me any other support that you can. I would appreciate it greatly. I think that's going to cover it for this video, though. I do appreciate all the support as per usual. Please look forward to our remaining four guides. I got four characters left, and... uh all of the future content I plan to do on this game for all the new content that comes out. I'll probably do a tier list. I'll probably cover the new raids that come out and the new characters that come out as well. So please look forward to that. With all that being said, thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful and blessed day. And hopefully I'll see you back here soon.